1860 when the old Pony Express broke the silence barrier from the east out to the west. Carried mail between old Sacramento and St. Joe. Use our imaginations, and with the help of these photographs, we'll be able to see what uh, Lafayette looked like in 1860-1861 when uh, the Pony Express came through here. But first of all, I have to go back up just a little bit in history to 1849. <laughs> That's when Elam Brown bought the Rancho Acalanes from uh, Leifdorf. And the Rancho Acalanes was a 3,000-acre Mexican land grant. He also bought uh, 300 head of cattle at the same time, and this was all for $900. In other words, 30 cents a, a, uh, an acre. Wish we could do that now. He donated this area to the community, and it's been the plaza ever since. It has had many shapes, many sizes, the appearance has changed many times, and at one time it sported an 85 mile an hour speed limit sign. I don't know how you could get up to 85 miles an hour in the park. As a rider came in, he would come on Golden Gateway. The first piece of business he would look for would be the blacksmith shop. And that was situated uh, where the Bank of America building is right now. The, there were two journeymen <laughs> blacksmiths there, and one of them was Peter Thompson, Thompson Road, and a lot of the Thompson names around here because of him. And he was a uh, one that liked to celebrate Fourth of July in any big, big uh, activity. So when they found out that the Civil War had been completed, he put black powder in his the hole through his anvil, which runs the length of the anvil, and touched it off with a long steel rod with a red hot tip on it. When he got done, he not only had a big bang, but he had two pieces. <laughs> so he put it back together again by bolting two steel plates to either side of the anvil. If you want to see the anvil, it sits down in the north window of the library. Okay, on, this, on the corner, over here is a, at the World Savings Bank, there were three wooden hotels. The first one was built in 1853 by Milo Huff. The last one was built around 1900 by Philip Lamp. All three had the same fate. They all burned down. The first one because somebody tipped over a kerosene lamp. The second one because somebody got disgruntled because the uh, bartender wouldn't serve them the drink after hours. The third one, the hotel burned down because the uh, French cook went to sleep with a pot boiling on the stove. They had to bring in not only the Lafayette Fire Department, but the Walnut Creek Fire Department. And the Walnut Creek Fire Department had a pump that they could run over behind the wayside in there into an old swimming hole and pump the water out and save the buildings around the hotel, but they lost the hotel. Now the third item in building was the what we call a pioneer store. The picture is right over here as it looked in 1860. The man in the middle of the center bay is Benjamin Shreve. He was the owner of the hotel. In 1857 he applied for to become a postmaster and have a post office here in Lafayette but he wanted it under the name of Centerville. There was another Centerville post office in California, so he couldn't do that. So he, they said change the name, he changed it to Lafayette. We don't know if it was named directly after the general or because his wife came from Lafayette County in Indiana. Now the fourth picture gives you an idea of what the, rough, the road looked like. Look in the lower right-hand corner and you can see a wagon. And that's a photographer's wagon. He would fix up his glass plate there, it was a wet plate, go up to his camera, take the picture, bring the camera and plate back, and he would uh, process the negative there, make his prints by using sunlight as his light source. He didn't have electricity at that time. Thanks, Bill. Our next spe speaker is a professional historian specialist on the history of the Pony Express, 
and the route across the United States. In 1991, he became the first person to ever ride on horseback the entire Pony Express Trail from St. Joseph, Missouri to San Francisco, California. This trip took in all branches of the route except one, and every mile of available trail still left. It took 87 days to accomplish, of which 77 days were spent on horseback at an average of 27.23 miles per day. Some historians are aware that the second and third westbound trip of the Pony Express in 1860 had, upon arriving in Sacramento, missed the only steamer boat to San Francisco. The Pony Express Company arranged for the ride to continue by horseback to San Francisco via Davis, Vacaville, Fairfield, Venetia, Martinez, Walnut Creek, Lafayette, and Oakland. Our speaker's research has uncovered an additional 17 trips overland from Sacramento to San Francisco in 1861. He was instrumental in having the trail expanded to San Francisco from Sacramento by the United States Congress by making the whole Pony Express route from St. Joseph, Missouri to San Francisco part of the national trail system. This was passed by Congress, incidentally, and signed by President Bush just this last October. Uh, uh, August. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the National Director of the Pony Express Trail Association, Joe Nardone. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen and friends, um, honored guests, it's my pleasure to be here. We've received a letter here from Representative Miller that I'd like to read to you. This letter is written to Michael Messini, the mayor of Martinez. Thank you for your letter supporting the inclusion of the Pony Express National Historic Trail in the National Trail System. Legis the original Pony Express Trail from Sacramento to San Francisco on horseback by yours truly. I certainly appreciated receiving it. What we had done over the last two years is gathered together almost 5,000 signatures from folks like yourself supporting this. And today we're here in Lafayette Square because the Pony Express rode through here 19 different times. In 1860, when the Pony Express left Missouri, and arrived here in California, how many states did it go through? <laughs> well, it only went through Missouri and California. Everything else was a territory. <laughs> now, on that second trip of the Pony Express, when it arrived in Sacramento on April 23rd, the boat, and now keep in mind there was only one boat a day, and nothing on Sunday, and it left Sacramento at 2 o'clock, the boat had already left down the river when the rider came in. Well, the mail was scheduled to go to San Francisco, not Sacramento. So they devised a system of riding overland on the main stagecoach telegraph line at that time. And if any of you are curious, this map we had created, which will show you the route and the stations. This was a station. This is what we would call a relay site. The rider would come in on his horse, get off, pick up a new horse, put his mochila, which is the saddle type bag that they carried the mail in, on top of the saddle, sit on top of both of those, and he took off. Basically, he went up over the hills, went down into Berkeley, took Telegraph Street to Broadway, went all the way to the foot of Broadway, where he then got on a ferry boat called the Oakland, rode it into San, or, you know, took the water route to San Francisco. Now, this occurred 19 different times. The Pony Express only lasted 19 months, folks. It started April 3rd of 1860, and the very last trip was November 20th of 1861. So that means that almost once a month this would occur. Well, actually, it only occurred twice in 1860, on the second and third trips. And they had no problems until 1861, and then in that short span of 1861 of about 10 months, they did this 17 different times. Mainly their trouble was they kept coming in Saturday after the boat left and there was nothing on Sunday, so they definitely had to get the mail in. 
Uh, at this moment, I'll take one or two questions if anybody's got it. I will remain here after the program is over with and we, when we do the dedication. So if anybody would like to come up and talk to me uh, or share any anecdotes that they have, it would be my pleasure. Thank you very well, One second. Go ahead, sir. How much did it cost to send a letter from Missouri to, to San Francisco? Well, the question was, is how much did it cost to send a letter? Actually, it would have cost the same both ways. Uh, initially, it cost $5 to send a letter. It would take approximately 12 days in the summer and 14 days in the winter to arrive. Uh, later on, in the middle of 1861, when the federal government got involved with the mail system, it was reduced to $1. Still quite expensive for that time. What event terminated the Pony Express? It goes click, 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 click. It was a telegraph. Okay? In October, in fact, on October 24th, 1861, the telegraph was finally completed from coast to coast. And most historians use that day as the last day of the Pony Express. Except my notes showed me that a rider had left Sacramento on October 22nd. And so I asked myself, what did they do? In the middle of Nevada, tell the guy to stop and go back home? Well, we, we kept researching the newspapers after that date, and we found that that mail came in to Missouri on November 4th. We also noticed another one had left for California, which arrived here in San Francisco. It's in the Sacramento and the San Francisco newspapers that it arrived on November 20th, 1861. That was the last trip. We also have one of those original letters with that postmark of November 20th in San Francisco, too, to confirm it. How many trips a week did the Pony Express ride? They started off doing one a week. And after about the first month, they ran into Indian troubles. There was a war out in Nevada and Utah, and it shut the Pony Express down for about six weeks. Right after that, which was about the third month, or we're right into the end of June, they went to twice a week, which they then maintained for the next seven or next 15 months. You're going to enjoy this plaque. I'd like to give a special acknowledgement to the Lafayette Historical Society. Okay, Bill Wakeman, their president, uh, for, for getting this going. And our, 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 our um, master of ceremonies <laughs> for putting this program together. Thank you all. I would like to introduce a local expert on the Pony Express, a man who has done considerable research with Joe Nardoni and followed him by automobile twice over the route from Sacramento to St. Joseph, Missouri. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present Tom Cruise. One of the original Pony Express riders was William Frederick Fisher. One of his grandsons is William Fisher, an astronaut for our space program. As a mission specialist, Fisher took along with him on the space shuttle Discovery in August of 1985, Pony Express artifact depicting some of the Pony Express history. No, neither of William Frederick Fisher, the Pony Express rider, or William Fisher, the, the astronaut, are here with us today. But a great-granddaughter of the Pony Express rider and a cousin of the astronaut is here with us and is in fact a very active Lafayette citizen, whom many of you know. May I present Sue Jones. Next honored guest is a young lady who won an essay contest earlier this year as a student at Lafayette Elementary School. The subject for the essay was why I would like to be a Pony Express rider. As winner of this essay contest, she received a cer certificate delivered by Pony Express as recreated by Joe Nardoni earlier this year. Ladies and gentlemen, may I, may I introduce Alexandra Anton, known by her friends as Ali. thank the Historical Society for all the work they have done. I have a special place in my heart for the Pony Express because that was my project in sixth grade that I wrote my long paper on and made the Pony Express bags and I think it is a wonderful history that we pass down to our children and we have to really thank the Historical Society for keeping it alive for all of us. Thanks. I would like now to turn the program over to our Historical Society president, Bill Wakeman, for the dedication. Bill? Hey, Allie. 
We will now unveil the medallion and plaque. The, the Historical Society would like to present this medallion and plaque to the citizens of the city of Lafayette. Here you are, Mayor. Well, thank you, Bill, and thank you very much, Allie, and thank you, Joe Nardoni and Mr. Crouch. I think without all of your efforts, we wouldn't have ever known that the Pony Express ever came through here. But uh, it, it's a delight to have this plaque and to have this additional bit of uh, history brought to life for us by the Historical Society. We, we thank you, and we'll protect the plaque. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Rain or sleet or wind or snow, our Indians on the trail. Nothing but the hand of God could stop the U.S. mail. Pony, Pony Express, hardest riding cowboys in the history of the world.